I worshipped my grandfather growing up, as he was such a strong presence in my life. Even into his later years, he could remember conversations he had with people almost 20 years ago. I learned from my mother that he was a passenger aboard the Titanic, but refused to ever speak of it with people. I had become obsessed with the story of the sinking, as I wanted to do a presentation on it for my school. My grandfather raised his voice at me for the first time in his life after I begged him to tell me the story. He scolded me, and I was frightened as I had never seen him act like this. I went to my bedroom, and I started weeping as I was just so freaked out by what happened. He came into my room and apologized for the way he acted. I could see the regret on his face as I flinched back from him when he tried to hug me. The next morning I walked downstairs to find him sitting at the table with a look of sadness on his face. He asked me to sit down and I reluctantly agreed. His face had conflicting emotions as he told me that he would tell me what actually happened on the Titanic. He made me a promise to never tell anyone as he was worried people might think he was crazy. I sat there dumbfounded as he started telling the story. I was only seven years old when I climbed on board the Titanic. It seemed so gigantic compared to me as I was struck by how beautiful everything looked. There were so many people everywhere and they were all so friendly and smiling. I stood at the edge of the ship and waved at the people on the dock as we prepared to set sail. It was one of the happiest moments in my life as I had never felt such exhilaration. My parents ushered me to my room when we were underway as they wanted to enjoy the ship. I knew we had spent most of our money to get tickets as my parents had always wanted to live in America. I began to notice some strange behavior from some of the other passengers in the second day of the cruise. They seemed to be coughing a lot and their eyes were very red. My father assured me that it was nothing but I can remember how frightened he looked. He left for a few minutes and came back carrying a wrench and told me it was just for protection. I was awoken the next morning by screams coming from the next room. I jumped out of bed and rushed to see what was happening. There was already a group of people standing outside the door and I pushed them out of the way to get a better view. I froze while staring at the contents of the room. There was a man lying on the floor with his stomach ripped open while his two young children seemed to be feasting on his intestines. I was shoved out of the way as two of the crew rushed in. They grabbed the children and struggled to hold them as the children were like rabid animals. They managed to subdue the children by knocking them out cold. We were ushered back to our room so that they could clean up the mess. I wandered the ship for the day and noticed that a lot of people seemed to be very sick. The crew seemed to be very on edge and were always looking around them. I was awoken on the fourth day by screams and running from outside the cabin. I peeked outside and was shocked as the hallway was covered in blood. I quickly closed the door and went to wake my parents but they weren't there. I didn't know what to do as I was afraid to leave the room but I was afraid to be by myself. I spent a couple hours trying to decide what to do. My rumbling stomach finally convinced me that I needed to leave and find some food. Half the day had already gone and I just sat there. I crept to the door and peeked out and was relieved to find the hall empty. There were distant sounds of the engines rumbling and the occasional scream. I remember that there was a kitchen down the hallway which would probably have something in it I could eat. It took an eternity for me to move down the corridor as I was trying to avoid stepping into blood or blood-stained clothes. I reached the kitchen and almost puked while gazing at the corpses inside. They looked like someone had stabbed them hundreds of times. They appeared to be a mixture of crew members and passengers. I grabbed any food that was close at hand and fled. I quickly ate the food that I had acquired and began to search the ship. I kept coming across more corpses along each corridor. Many of them looked like they had their stomachs ripped open. 
It was beginning to get dark, and I was starting to get worried that everyone else on board was dead. I rounded a corner, and my bladder let loose as a gun was pointed in my face. I stood there shaking as one of the crew gazed at me for a few moments. He put the gun away before rushing off and leaving me standing there alone. It took me a while to gather my senses, and by this time it was completely dark. I had heard distant gunshots in the direction the crew member had run, and wondered what he had shot. I was thrown to my feet as a deafening crash rocked the ship. I ran to the side and gazed out at an enormous lump of ice which we had crashed into. Lumps of ice began to crash down beside me, and I had to move away to avoid being hit. I watched the piece of ice disappear off into the distance and wondered how bad the damage was. I heard a noise behind me and was instantly relieved to see my father. I began rushing towards him, but stopped after seeing his clothes were covered in blood. His eyes locked on mine, and I began to shrink back at his gaze. His gaze was that of an animal, and not of human. He let out a growl, and then began to charge at me. I felt my bladder release once again as I awaited my death. My father suddenly went flying backwards, and I turned around to discover the same crew member from earlier still clutching the gun. He looked at me for a few moments and indicated me to follow him. He was moving very quickly, and I was barely able to keep pace. He was peeking around every corner, and we walked by dozens of corpses. We eventually reached an area with a large number of survivors. Some were attempting to lower the lifeboats while others were trying to fight off the other passengers. We managed to get the lifeboats down and slowly began to evacuate any survivors. The ship at this point was slowly starting to sink, and it was desperate trying to get as many people to safety as possible. Our lifeboat was moving away from the ship and I could see the dozens of passengers rushing backwards and forwards just attacking each other. The ship had begun to sink beneath the waves, and most of the people were at the back of the ship. I turned away as I didn't want to see any more of this. There were sniveling cries from the others on the boat as none of us could understand what had happened. A few hours later, other ships arrived and we were rescued. My mother had survived on another lifeboat and we tearfully reunited. My mother was offered a large amount of money by the owners of the Titanic to never say a word and she agreed. I think most of the survivors would rather have forgotten this had ever happened, so it was accepted by everyone. I remember reading the newspapers afterwards and wondered if anyone would ever know what really happened. I finished his story as I couldn't believe what I had just heard. He sat there with a tear rolling down his cheek and then swore me to secrecy. I went to bed that night with the intention of asking him more questions in the morning. My mother found his body the next morning. He had suffered a fatal heart attack during the night. I'm posting this now in hopes of finding others who had family members who survived the Titanic. I really want to know the full story of what happened. Hey guys, thanks for listening in. If y'all like this story, be sure to subscribe and hit that like icon for more future stories. And if you have a story you want to submit, be sure to send it to my email, it's linked in the description. So, sleep tight, and stay terrified. <laughs>